I'm going to talk about sin and repentance today. <laughs> really strong in the Christian way of thinking, isn't it? Sinning, sinners, you're born into original sin. <laughs> well, the word comes from sans, S-A-N-S. It's a French word, and it means without. It's an old archery term. So if you were aiming your arrow at the bullseye and you didn't quite hit the bullseye, you were outside, then that was sans. And what you had to do if you were missing the point, missing the bullseye, you had to think again. Just take another look at things. Have another go. Think again. Repenser. Repenser. Repentance. Repent. So, sin and repentance is just missing the bullseye and having another go. <laughs> And the Christians have turned this into something to beat up their people with. You bad people, you're sinners, all of you, repent. <laughs> and it's said with that tone of voice as well, repent. It's not repent, you know, rethink. It's repent, you bad person. And um, honestly, I mean, if you think about it, it's so bizarre, so nonsensical. And you know, the worst thing is not only that the priests, particularly in the Catholic Church, have done this, and they continue to do this, even in the modern era, my goodness. But people believe this nonsense. They, they actually believe that they are sinners. They are born into original sin. I'm a bad person and I always will be because I'm born. Because I'm breathing, I'm necessarily evil. People believe that. And however sad we are for them that they are that brainwashed, there's a part of us which has to say, look, for goodness sake, you know, be real now. And any of you who, who was brought up a Roman Catholic and you still got this guilt thing, lingering within your your being. Let, let me address that question for you. It's wrong. Guilt is wrong. It's not just bad or not quite right. It's just wrong. It's thoroughly wrong for this world. It's There's two energies, which is just one energy having two sides. Blame and guilt. That is a single energy. And that's the only thing really in the world, in our world, that's wrong fundamentally. Somehow it was introduced at some point, prehistory and so on. Some agency introduced that idea of blame and guilt. And, and it, it stuck. It, it lingers today in our consciousness. consciousness. It's just wrong. <laughs> and the best thing to do is just to notice whether whatever you're doing is motivated by guilt. If it is, then it will create a worse result than not doing it. Guilt is always going to be wrong, and so it creates a wrong result. We, we mustn't ever, ever, ever do anything funded by guilt. And one can speak equally strongly about blame. The idea of pointing your finger at someone else and judging them to be sinners, they should feel guilty. That's what's wrong with the world. Um, the reason that we do that to other people, blame other people, is because we have been blamed. It just passes from one to the next, from generation to generation. The sins of the fathers are visited upon their sons. So is written in the Bible, you know. Well, that's fair enough. The mistakes of one generation are passed on to the next. Fair enough. How else evolution? You know, that's, that's pretty good. But the idea that that should be interpreted as guilt, that's not good. What happens is that as newborns, we are in pristine condition. 
we're like a, a gossamer field of sensitive energy. And imagine my hand to be that gossamer field of sensitive energy. And it's impacted upon. And there's two ways that you can do that. You can consistently do the same thing in the same way until it takes shape, or it can be a, a sudden shock. So in early childhood, typically, I would say, in the first three months of childhood, we're impacted upon and we, we change our shape. Instead of being a fluid kind of plane that bounces back to regain its neutral position, we take a position, we take a shape, and that is crystallized into an attitude of being. That's our emotional pattern taking shape there. Now the thing is that the impact created in us a concave expectation of being done to. And when we grew up, we still had that concave expectation of being done to. So if we were bullied as kids, we're going to expect to be bullied as adults. However, the other side of it is also true, that it creates in us a con... Sorry, the concave is how we were impacted upon. And then there's this convex side where we do the same to others that was done to us. And we're all doing it. This is not just an aberration. This is not just strange neurotic people. This is how we all are. How we were treated as kids is how we do treat other people when we grow up unconsciously. Now the extent to which we don't do that anymore is the extent to which we've moved into consciousness. And we all do, we all gain consciousness as we grow in spiritual awareness particularly, but as we grow anyway. And we stop doing things that maybe were done to us because we want to be better people than our parents. Let's say, not everybody believes that, but let's say that we've actually corrected quite a few of the faults of our parents so that we're not quite as bad as they are. Nevertheless, it must be assumed that to some extent we are. So if you actually find yourself now being treated badly by someone, then just look around and see whom you treat in the same way. If you stop treating other people in that way, you will be treated better yourself. That's how it works. So whatever was done to you as a child, stop doing it to others now as an adult, and the patterns won't continue. That's the fundamental healing formula. Now, if we apply this to blame and guilt, if, let's say, you were blamed as a kid for doing terrible things like eating your peas with the fork, the wrong way, which is like what I did as a child. My father was so angry with me because I held the fork in the wrong way to eat my peas with. I remember it to this day, you know. And maybe I've grown up to look at people in restaurants and just go, they aren't brought up properly or something. I, I must have that going on. And by stopping myself from being judgmental about others, then I heal the guilt that I feel within myself, given to me by my beloved Father. And that's how it works. So if you want to stop feeling guilty, then stop blaming people. If you were brought up a Catholic, you are inevitably going to have this to deal with. I haven't met a client yet who announces they're a Catholic without them saying, and I've got the guilt to prove it, or something similar. It is par for the course. So inevitably, they're going to be more judgmental people. So if that's you, well then just watch that. See how many judgments you've got. And that means noticing even, even noticing whether somebody is in accordance with your sense of propriety. What does it matter to you whether they are or not? Stop looking for that, you know. When somebody sees that you're behaving badly, the observation itself is a judgment. As my Sufi teacher once explained to me, how do you actually deal with people that really, really treat you badly? And, and 
I said, put up strong boundaries and explain to them that you don't like it. And he said, okay, that, that might work. But there's another way, a better way that, that he himself liked to practice. And I said, okay, well, what do you do when somebody treats you badly? He said, I don't notice. I just don't notice. I don't care. <laughs> a wise and humble man. So if people treat you badly, don't blame them for it. Just don't notice. Mind your own business. And your business is making sure that you don't blame people. <laughs>